been transformed ourselves to be the leaders that we deserve to be. To so know there is a reward at the end. I want you to know there is a reward at the end. You got to see it. When you have the money to do for the people that you love because of all the sacrifice that will be paid, that's what this is all about. For these 40,000 people to say, look, we are ready to take this field to build it with us. Please, Northeast. Northeast, let's stand up. Stand up. Let's give it up. Let's give it up. Wait, oh. Let's give it up for our Executive Vice President of Marketing and Development for Legal Shield, $900,000 annual income earner, multi-millionaire club member, Platinum World Executive Director, Platinum World Council member, Mr. Darnell Self. <laughs> success for your family. And uh, you should be unapologetic to that. All right? So don't feel guilty. This is a for-profit business. And so today I've shifted my topic a little bit because I want to teach you how to get the six-figure ring. Because um, as Ms. Malloy shared, you know, I was listening to her share about the, uh, the limited market penetration here in the Northeast, but yes, the vast market that exists. And what people need are examples. You know, fortunately or unfortunately, right? Because um, we should want to be the example, but the masses are followers, quite frankly. And I don't say that to be insensitive or to be demeaning at all, but just to say that most folks don't even believe until they see. Right? They lack the faith necessary to say, well, I'll be the person. I'll be the 82-year-old. You know, and so that someone who starts at 75 won't think it's too late. You know, I, I'll be the person that only had a third grade education, like the gentleman on our team who's driven trucks all his life with an executive director. Mm. Never made it past the third grade. But someone needs that example to say, oh man, then I'm okay because I thought it was bad that I just had a GED, just had a GED. And this is how you know people are talking themselves out of their own success because they, they use the just word. Right, right. You know what I mean? Uh, and so I'm just a manager. Now, what level are you? I'm just a manager. So they're already talking themselves out of the future success because they feel like the level of success they already had doesn't mean anything, but it means everything. Mm -hmm. It means everything. The small wins add up to big wins. So we're going to talk about earning six figures. Is that okay? Yes. Now, if that is out of your frame of reference, if you just can't imagine $8,333.33 $8 a month, that's <laughs> what six figures in a year is. You gotta know your goal in order to go for your goal. Like, if you plan to take an army to war, it's good to have a plan. That's right. But at the same time, um, sometimes you have a plan, it doesn't quite work out like you expect. And so I'm gonna start my talk off here, and I'm gonna move swiftly. Now, it takes some points here as I was sitting there. And sometimes I shift like that, right? But um, one thing I wanna talk about is becoming over dependent on your own agenda. Mm. Becoming over dependent on your own agenda. All right, so you thought this month was going to end up a certain way, and it doesn't, and so you're all messed up because you expected that that particular person was going to do more than they actually did. Uh, you thought that you hit a level that you missed, and I'm thankful now that that I had this message to share because uh, I had to go through it. But when you're going through, it, you're not you're not sure why you're going through it. And then I realized to bless a lot of people, right? Because I've been at a place where I didn't have, so it allows me to speak with those who don't have. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when you've always had, 
And it's not unintentional, it's called an unintended consequence. We speak down or at people, and we don't even realize it, because we've never been there, so we really can't relate, even though we try our best to. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And so we don't realize that we're coming across as speaking down to people or at people, and a little condescending. And again, we don't mean it, but it's because we've never been there. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm thankful for that, for that season in my life, right? But then I've been in a season where I've had a lot of income. And so I'm able to speak with those in the room who have a lot of income. So I'm thankful, thankful for that. So let's talk real quickly about becoming old dependent on your agenda. Now, remember I was a lot of the majors, so um, one of my majors was radio, television, and film. I know I'm in New York, so there's a lot of script writing here, so uh, perhaps you can relate to what I'm about to say. Uh, and so when you're writing scripts, uh, especially for television, sometimes there's an A story, a B story, and a C story. Right? Seinfeld's a great example of that, right? So it's a main story, and then sometimes a B story that wraps into the, the A story. Sometimes a C story that wraps into the B and the A story, but you don't find out until the end of the show. <laughs> So for those who've never heard me teach before, um, sometimes I tell a whole bunch of different stories and they seemingly have nothing to do at all <laughs> with your legal show business. But in the end, that C story wraps back around, you're like, I got it. So stick with me. Because I know I'm going to take you on this journey. And how long are you going to take me down this rabbit hole? <laughs> but don't worry, it'll mean something. Stick with me. You guys ready? Yeah. Now look, 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 look. I know, I know, and you know that um, you're not going to get everything every day. You're not going to get everything from every meeting. And sometimes you can come to an event like this, and you, we can say for 10 hours you wouldn't get everything. So I don't want you to think just because um, you've come to this event that tomorrow you become massively successful. <laughs> right? But what happens is if I'm able to change the direction towards success just a little bit, you get closer to it. Right. right. In other words, uh, your destiny may not change tomorrow, but your direction towards your destiny can change for tomorrow. Yeah. So, um, so it all started when I was 11 years old. <laughs> you know, it's funny when people say stuff like that again, because you think, I know you're not going to go from 12, 13, 14, until right, you're 46, right? That's what all this is for 12 hours. So I laughed at myself this time, because it really did start when I was 11. So I was 11 years old, and uh, my mom says, it's funny because she's here today, so it's really funny to confirm this. I'm, I won't tease you too much, Mom. But she, but she encouraged me to join the Junior Usher Boys. She's 11 years old. Stick with me. I know this sounds crazy. She, joined, she encouraged me to join the Junior Usher Board. And she says, look, at um, some point in life, it's important to learn that you need to serve others. And I think being on the Junior Usher Board will teach you that lesson. I didn't want to join the Junior Usher Board. You have to learn all the hand signal stuff at the Baptist church, you know what I'm saying? But I joined the Junior Usher Board. Junior Usher Board. I know what he's done to you right now. You're thinking, how does this have to do anything with six figures? Stick with me. So I'm in the ninth grade now. I'm jumping. It's me, okay? So I jump. Ninth grade. I wanted one thing for Christmas. That was it. Just one thing. I wanted an Adidas sweatsuit. Adidas was it, so I wanted back then Run DMC was the hot rabbit. <laughs> and, uh, and they wore this Adidas sweatsuit in the music video. Stick with me, New York. And Adidas sweatsuit had three stripes going on the arm and three stripes going on the leg. Okay, stick with me. So I'm thinking, man, this is all I want, Dad. My dad drove the Metro, my mother worked for the government. We weren't wealthy, but we, you know, we, we were poor, right? So we were somewhere, somewhere in between there. And so my, my mom and my dad, I guess, have this discussion. I don't know about the discussion, but I do know there's a gift under the tree. And I'm thinking, that's it. I know it is. That's all I wanted. I'm not for anything else. That's all I want. So you shake the box. If you ever had kids and you celebrate Christmas, you move it because it feels like a sweatsuit sliding up and down. So I'm like, this is a sweatsuit. Tell me what I know. Same with me. So, um, so Christmas, I open up the box. I'm like, yes, it looks like the sweatsuit. I roll down the jacket. I'm like, man, yes. And then I see on the sleeve, there's four strikes. <laughs> and all Adidas has three strikes. Just because you all. Know. What is this? What is this? Can't, can't figure this out. So my dad says, proudly, by the way, it's Hermes. <laughs> It's a store, and they sell the, similar to the Adidas sweatsuit. Right, it's thirty-nine dollars, Darnell. 
the deed of the source back then was $80 every day. It's like, just $39, Darnell. I'm like, I can't wear it. Like, mom, help me out. Like, come on, bro. Only help me take something to dad. <laughs> so, um, it's the worst day ever in my ninth grade year. So I went to a public school. The public school didn't have uniforms back then. So, you know, you prepare for those public school doors, you know what I'm talking about? You prepare what you're going to wear. Coming back from the Christmas break, you're ready to wear your new gear. Stay with me, everybody. This has something to do with six fingers in one second. It's the worst day ever. I had to wait. So I said, Mom! Okay, since I couldn't have that, let me have the uh, guest jeans. Back then, guest jeans were good jeans to have. They had an upside triangle on the back pocket. Okay. So my mom says, Guess what? I'm a sore triangle on the back of the other jeans. <laughs> If you want to wear designer clothes, son, get a job where they sell designer clothes and you can get it. Hence, my retail experience. So I go in to apply at this store called Up Against the Wall in DC. If you're familiar with the DC area, uh, back in the 80s and 90s, the most popular, trendy store. So I go in, bless you, I go into this, to this store to apply. I fill out the application, put it in the box. And if you, if you ever apply somewhere and they pull out the applications uh, which people, applicants have previously, previously applied, there was a whole lot. I'm not joking. I, I didn't look at how many, but it had to be like 100 applications. I'm thinking, no way. And my ass is going to get lost in here. Before I walk out the store, this gentleman who was the manager, Mike Cunningham, said, excuse me, Darnell. Turned around. He said, come back. Came back. He said, um, when would you like to start? Wow. Wow. And I was like, now? <laughs> he said, because I noticed on your extracurricular activity, you put Junior Usher on. Sit with me. <laughs> now, you know how much of a nerd I must have been <laughs> I couldn't put anything else down but extra. How many teenagers did you know? First, think about your own teenagers that would put Junior Usher on as an extracurricular activity. So I, I worked there for a couple of years, now it's 11th grade, and I'm starting to apply to college. Check this out. So I apply to this college, and I go to school, while I'm still working at the store, but then I become a pre-med major. And they had a better, better pre-med uh, program at the University of Maryland than the college I was going to, so I changed. And so he said, hey, there's another store, location just like that one, right up the street from the University of Maryland, literally two minutes, I could walk there. So I got this job at that particular location. Well, this pretty girl walks by the mall. She peeks in the store at that location. And she says, now that guy's handsome. I'm going to get a job there. That happens to be my wife, Tracy Self. <laughs> <laughs> this is my version of the story. You guys <laughs> 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 so, so, I'm, I'm gonna go. so once I cover this part, it'll make, all, it'll make sense. So then, um, so this mall, by the way, was a, a mall where they did more shooting than buying clothes. So it's a mall, right? I mean, it's kind of joking, but it's not, right? It was seriously dangerous. And, uh, and so and we sold things like um, Versace, Iceberg, high-end items, you know, $600 sweaters. So most of the guys who were buying that stuff at that time weren't getting the money legally. All right, so it's a tough mall. And so I never forget, this guy comes to the mall, and he says to me, hey, dude, I'm still in this jacket. Well, that's a different type of thief. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? Because most, if you were a piece of a whole shop with this, you know, they bring a, a stroller in, you know, like a baby, they go in the spin room, break the sensor, put it on and eat. You know, yeah. you just, anytime you got a thief that says, hey, they're telling you, I'm about to steal. Look at me. That's a, that's a different type of thief. <laughs> so I never forget, it was a Monica Gore-Tex coat. We got to So I said, um, don't do that. Because I'm about to call security. They're going to chase you down the hall. Then the county cops are going to come. You're going to get arrested over the jacket. Is it worth it? He said, yep. Wow. <laughs> Different type of thing. Yeah. yeah. So I'm about five feet away from him. I'm trying to have a discussion, right? Because I got this heart trying to help. So I'm like, look, man. He's like, look, like I said, I'm going to steal the coat. You ain't going to do nothing. And then charge towards me and push my head against the glass showcase where the mannequins were. 
I wasn't as person developed then as I am today. <laughs> So I just swung and hit him on his chair, and he fell. It didn't stop there. That probably could have been enough because I could have called security. But my assistant manager named Rob, let's call him Hood, <laughs> <laughs> ran over and started kicking the guy's head oh on God. the ceramic tile oh until his tooth came out oh my God. with his Timberland boots. He's kicking his head. So this guy, stick with me now. I know you're thinking, why do we bring him as a special guest? <laughs> stick with me. <laughs> on an A story, am I wrapping around? <laughs> so where am I? Now, at this time, I got married to Tracy, so she's my wife, she's the cashier, I'm the manager. So this guy calls, and guess who answers the phone? Because she's the cashier, Tracy. And he says, hey, tell that dude that's the manager, He's getting capped tonight when he walks out. Mm -hmm. Now, just to um, give you the urban translation. <laughs> but some of you are thinking, that's awful nice of him. <laughs> Baseball cap, no, it's not what that means. Right? That means shot, cap, shot. <laughs> urban translation. So he says, he's getting capped tonight. So my wife calls my mom and tells her what's going on. My mom immediately goes into prayer, then call me and said, you need to quit, you gotta leave. So I answer adding the paper, check this out. Because I was desperate to leave. The ass is you keep doing what you're doing, keep getting what you got. Call for interview. That was my introduction to network marketing. I thought it was an interview, I had no idea. Watch this. So I go in and they interview me, but it's 50 other people there. I think all these people doing in my interview. <laughs> I don't know, I'm the direct sales, I don't know what's going on. I'm gullible though, don't judge me, I'm gullible. So I ordered thousands of dollars worth of items. They said, look, you can start as a manager, you're already managing your job. I said, yeah, they said, well, we'd like to start you as a manager. I said, sounds good to me. They said, it only takes $5,000. I said, I don't have $5,000, so you have a credit card. I said, I have a debit card. They said, would you like to get a credit card? I said, sure. They went online at that point and got me a credit card. This is how good they were at sales. I ordered $5,000 worth of Vitamins. Put it all in that car. Took it to the limit. It only had $5,000. The limit. Get it. Don't judge me. I'm gullible. 25 years old. This is what's going on in my life. And um, they said, now you gotta go to a training class. Check this out. You gotta go to a training class. The first training class was called a basic training class. It'd be like our fast start training class. By the way, your 249 pays for that year. There was $300. So the, this is after five grand. Then they said, look, now you gotta go to an advanced class. That would be like this, where they fly someone in. Like there's a big deal. That was $600. So now I'm, I'm already in about six grand. So, um, by the way, I'm, I'm gonna get to this in just one second. But my success happened fast in legal shit because of all the things I'm talking about, just in case you don't know. Because when it was 249 when I got started, I thought to myself, and guess what? The best part about it all is only 249 to become wealthy in America. This is my posture. This is my disposition, right? Because I was just a five grand. 249 was a joke. But if you're not used to investment, right, right, you're right. like, well, I mean, I, it is too funny. Your yeah. whole disposition is wrong. Right. Mm -hmm. Why somebody who's proven to make billions for 20 bucks? I mean, buy 10 of those tickets. <laughs> this is my, I'm telling you, this is my this is how I built facts. This is my belief level. Couldn't believe they were going to allow us to do this for 20 bucks. People spend that on three cups of coffee now. <laughs> so, um, that company didn't work out for me, right? I think I may have mentioned it earlier. You have to keep buying products, keep buying products. Some of you have been in makeup companies, buying companies to qualify for your show. You gotta keep buying more of it. And so that took me down a road that I'd rather not discuss right now, but it was tough. And, uh, and then here I am, three years later, from 25 to 28, trying different things. And I just kept going faster and faster, further and further into debt. So my wife had a job, she was trying to maintain while I was trying different things. By the way, they call me overqualified. I try to get a job, and so do you all know. I try to work at the airport at night. I try to uh, do all types of janitorial services, work at the supermarket, Costco, they call me overqualified. But I didn't know what that meant at the time. I know what it means now. It means that, look, you're better than what we will offer you. That means if you find something better, you're gonna leave us after you spend time training. Which they were right. And, um, and so I went through all of that, right? Three years before I was introduced to Legal Shield. And so that was, that was tough for me. So I got this call, bring it around, from a young lady who was 
threatening me because I couldn't pay my mortgage. Her name was Bernadette. And it was a turning point for me. She says, the mortgage is due. I said, I know. She says, what do you expect to pay? I said, I don't know. I don't have the money right now. She said, are those your kids out here in the background? I said, yes. She said, you can't love your kids if you don't pay your bills on time. Mm-hmm. Couldn't believe it hurt me. Like, to my core, because I do love my kids. For those who know me, I really adore my kids. And so I said, of course I love my kids. She says, when you pay your bills on time. She says, when you get your next check. I said, I don't know. I don't have a job. I'm building a business. I'm working on my dreams. She says, you need to work on a reality and get a job. Mm-hmm. This is a bill collector, by the way. And it was burning me up. And guys, I don't know if you're a drill and ever started rushing and you feel like you're going to cry, not because you're sad, but because you just can't believe you're in this situation. So it was tough. My wife was like, just hang up, the, hang up the phone, honey. Before I hung up, I said, what's your name? She said, Bernadette. Bernadette, never forget it. Uh, so let me bring this whole thing around. Uh, if I was over-dependent on my own agenda, mm. I would have to already know that I would have to join the junior usher board so that when I apply for a job, I would get hired at the mall that I would need to be at so that I could meet my wife. And because I would have to meet my wife there, because when the guy steals and my hood assistant manager, which I would have to hire, I know that he's good enough to kick somebody when they're down. This has to happen at that particular location because I have to be my wife and she has to answer the phone because if she wasn't the one to answer the phone, no one would ever call my mom and I wouldn't have felt obligated to quit. And I wouldn't, if I wouldn't have felt so obligated to quit and to leave, I wouldn't have answered the ad which wouldn't have introduced me to this industry. Mm. And if I wouldn't have met someone who encouraged me to order $5,000, I wouldn't have felt like two forty nine dollars was such a cinch. Mm. Mm. And if I wouldn't have gone through all of those hardships, Bernadette would have never called me, which meant I would have never put Bernadette's name up around my house where I brushed my teeth or my sun visor. Enough that it pushed me, it urged me, because sometimes you need the pain of someone else accusing you of being somebody who you know you're not to do something more than you would have ever done. So I couldn't Athletes, right? I appreciate, and it's, it's, it's humbling when people say all these great things, but I know it was because I planned all this out, because I wouldn't have planned it that way. I wouldn't have had my wife go through all the things she had to go through, and all the hardships, and disbelief. I took away her dream, and I knew I took away her dream, because the time we started setting goals, this is illegal to our first year, I said, babe, I need you to write down everything you want in life. Write down the truck, or the car, rather. I would, you know, you would want once you start making income. She says, I don't need a car. I don't need any of that. I just want to be able to pay our bills. This is how I knew. She should use the just. When I told you that in the beginning, she used the just. I just want to be able to pay our bills. That means her dreams were gone. Mm-hmm. You just, I just want to pay our bills. She, I took her dreams away and didn't realize. It. So there's no way I could have pre-planned all of that. So I'm going to go through six figures, but it may not work out exactly how you think. But just know it's ordered in the right way it's supposed to be because yeah. you're on your way for a reason yeah. to the journey you have to go through. Because there's so much diversity in my organization, there's no way I could have planned it to become so diverse. And the reason why you're here today is because I'm going to teach one thing that you couldn't get somewhere else, but at the same time, I can't teach something that you have to get somewhere else. Mm. Right? So my memberships, I couldn't even stand up. My mem- I sold 775 memberships, which sounds impressive if you knew. You're like, man, go to D if you knew. <laughs> But when you multiply 12 times 17 years, it's what, 200 something months, and you divide that by the 775, you will be three point something. <laughs> so you're like, man, you didn't even sell a membership a week, bro. Why, that ain't that much. Don't me. I didn't even sell a membership a week. So I can't teach you today. I won't teach. I refuse to teach you how to become the best membership yet. Because it would be disingenuous. Well, how, how is it people on my team have sold thousands? Because I was an expert at team building and getting people in front of people who were better than me. Mm. I can't teach you how to be the best. I'm working on becoming the best recruiter, but the number one recruiter in Legal Shield is on my team. Yeah. Not because I'm so, how could I recruit the number one recruiter? This is why I can't take all the accolades you give me. And I'm going to show you today how you can earn six figures in spite of your own flaws. Mm. Because we're all flawless. My pastor said it this way. We all have a chapter. We hope nobody ever reads in our book. 
I got three. So my point is, you like, look, I'm not the best at all. And I refuse to teach what I'm not the best at. But I am great, honored to be great at building big teams and duplicating six-figure income earners. And today I'm going to teach that to you, Northeast. Woo!